Hallelujah. Tonight, it is a pleasure. I, I, I love when I minister at home. I love when I, I just came from the, from the cornfields of Harvison. Uh, my house is a nice little piece of property. I'm surrounded by cornfields on all three sides. I don't believe an alien would, dance, would land there and do that crop thing. You know how to do that crop thing? I'm just trying to tell you, people of God, it is so good to be with you. And we want to thank God for adoring the gospel, Apostle Wallace. God bless you. I want to talk to y'all, and I want to give you an old school message to try to help you. Amen. I, I, I'm not going to try to preach it up and what have you. That's not my style. Amen. I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm covered. No, it's not. Amen. I'm not going to try to so much preach it up. I want to give you some blessed instructions. Can we do that? Turn around to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Warfare, warfare with the strongest enemy, the strongest enemy. In, our in our lives. In this message, I'm going to teach you something about the strongest enemy you will ever fight in your life. Now, we have been known for commanding devils on many different levels all over the world. All over the world. Suriname, South America, uh, Tanzania, Uruguay, China. All the Asia Minor, we minister all over the entire earth, casting out demons and ministering to people. Amen? Amen. But I maintain to tell you tonight, I'm going to talk to us all about the strongest enemy that we all battle. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, the strongest enemy in my life, enemy in my life. is me. Yes, it is. <laughs> After God has saved us gloriously. The enemy you have to watch out for is you. Now, I wish that, because people all the time trying to get me to tell them what particular demon is the baddest demon and how they bound this and loose that. I, I get what they're trying to say. But can I tell you something? The greatest enemy that I've ever had to fight, and I still fight him, is me. Jesus. I said the same thing. It's myself. How many of y'all remember what God saved you from? Yeah. If you do, raise your hands. If you remember what God saved you from, do you really remember what he saved you from? Yeah, Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. it ain't dead. It's just crucified. It is. It's just crucified. Yeah. Yeah. Say, neighbor, neighbor, the very beast that I've been wrestling with from time to time, he tries to make a resurrection. From time to time, he tries to come back. And he is the greatest enemy yes. that I'm doing warfare with. Yes. Don't you kid yourself. I walk in the room sometime and I don't know whether people really, who, I, who they think I think I am. I think I am saved by grace. Thank you, Jesus. I think that I'm one day and one sin away from doing anything I used to do. See, people ain't going to tell you this. When I was young in the Lord, in my 17, 18 years old, get, getting into church, trying to learn the things of God, I thought there would be a place. Now, look, I am 63 years old right now, 63 years old, and the same stronghold, the same temptation, the same trials still hit me the same way. You will never get so old until you will not have to fight your worst enemy. And it's you yourself. I say this a thousand times. People do not do what they do because they got a devil. They get devils because of what they're doing. And baby girl, let, let, let this old school general tell you this, baby. The first time you sin or fail, you ain't getting no demon. Let him use you, man. Yes, yes. When you sin or fail, I hope you get convicted. How do I know if I'm really saved, Apostle Wallace? I know that I'm really saved. That when I do the slightest thing, when I sin the slightest way, when I say the slightest thing, I still feel myself being convicted. There was a time I could cuss you out and didn't feel a thing like that. Did, did I say enough? Yes, I like it. How many ever been there? You could sling a cuss, you could have a fight, and the only thing you worried about was did you hear him hard enough? But I messed around and got saved. I just messed around and God saved me. I can't even fight the same way no more. But I still got a fight in me now. Don't, don't, don't. don't push my buttons. Yeah. 
Don't make me go back there now. You don't want to know me, BC. You want to hear me right now. Are you hearing me? Somebody said the strongest enemy in my life. The Bible said in Galatians chapter 5, verse 11, here goes what it said. It said, stand fast. I'm going to take my time. Can I take my time? Because I want to give you something practical. I don't want to just preach you happy. I want to help you, number one, recognize that you are saved, but you have not arrived. Baby girl, I am known internationally, and I fear me. I fear when I get frustrated and aggravated and hurt and in pain. I fear being called back to the bondage God brought me from. And don't get twisted. You church can hurt you so bad until you want to go back in the world. Family can hurt you so bad until you want to cuss on us. Now you can say all you want to with your sanctified pride that you now deal with the Holy Ghost and that with a mighty burning fire and you can't do it. The devil is a liar and so are you. Are oh, you hearing me? I wish the old saints preached this to me because I thought something was wrong with me. I said, now wait a minute. I just had a powerful revival. How in the world can I get mad and want to fight somebody when they got up in my face? Wait a minute, God really moved. What in the world are the thoughts that used to plague my mind and, and try to pull me in? What's that? I saw God heal the sick, cast out devils. I seen God break yokes. What in the world? The crazy stuff that still tempts me. It still pulls at me. But what they do is they try to position me in a place. This is why the apostle Paul tells the Galatian church, stand fast. Therefore in the liberty where Christ have made us free and be not entangled again in the yoga manger. What the devil wants to do, what your self life wants to do is to get entangled again in the bondage. There's a part in you and me that will never be saved. And it's called your carnal mind. Mm -hmm. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, yes. your brain ain't saved. Yes. Your thoughts ain't saved. Yes. You better kill them, crucify them, put them to death, pull them down. Come on now. Yes. Oh, my God. Now, see, now here goes see, I like to just come real humble. Because you see, it's a joke on all the world that a cornfield boy from Harvison, straight up country as I can be, be put out in the world to have an international powerful name in deliverance and know right well I'm going to humble myself before the mighty hand of God. Because if God can give honor to your name, you better make sure you're exalting his. But you have to remember that God gives grace to the humble, but he abases those amen, that exalts themselves. He that exalts himself shall be brought down low, but he that lifts up the name of Jesus shall be seated upon high to give God the praise. I'll never forget my son. Back in the years as I was beginning to get known and I was on the major platform with Dr. Miles Monroe and, and Bishop Jason, different ones of them, and I was happy. I came home, I said, son, my God, I just preached with Apostle Eckhart and there was 4,000 people. I said, it was awesome. And my son said, Pop, he said, I remember something you told me, Pop. Now, I didn't say anything wrong. How many know sometimes somebody will give you a voice you need to hear because you need to hear it? And my son, he was happy for his daddy. But my son looked at me, he said, Dad, I remember what you told me. He was jumping to He said, Dad, I remember what you told me one time. I said, what's that, I? He said, God won't share his glory with nobody, will he? <laughs> that has kept me up to this day that God 
will not share you. No matter how holy and sanctified you think you are, don't get twisted. Don't you walk around here like a Christmas turkey with your arrogant self, acting like one of you are any more better than another. Because if I'm myself to you, your apostle, all of us in here, we ain't none no better than the other. We still wrestle with our own self. I, I would use the word you wrestle with your own demons, but that would give you somebody else to blame your mess on. We got to wrestle with me. I wrestle with myself. Paul said, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Paul said something almost sound like it was hypnotic. He said, the good that I want to do, that's what I don't do. And that which I allow, that I do not. He said, there's a war going on in my members. And I'm telling us all in here, we better stand fast. This word stand fast is turcos, and it means, glory be to God, to be stationary, to be stable. Somebody said, be stationary. Look at the neighbor. Say, neighbor, you'll want to do it, but remain stationary. You'll feel the same stuff. Remain stationary. I see, I'm sorry, but I haven't gotten so saved that the things that my flesh is tempted by are all gone because I haven't died in this body yet. Most folk lie to y'all. They lie to all of us. I'm so filled with the Holy Ghost. I've got such an anointing of God, praise God, that I believe you're tempted. You're a liar. And I'm not a child. I'm not a child, so don't treat me like a child. Don't come in here with this fake spirituality with his big thing. Now, I honor your title. God bless you. All five of them. But don't get twisted. No matter how many titles you got, you're still just men and women. And you're tempted by the same thing. And you do fail. You do fall. You do make mistakes. And if you're wise, you humble yourself before God and say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, save me. Lord, have mercy on me. Is anybody hear me? Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, just in case you're trying to escape the truth, the man is not telling you to sin. He's not telling you to cut up. He's not telling you to act up. The man is telling you, it's still there. This word stand fast means God wants us stationary in the liberty he has made set us free. What made you free in the beginning anyway? Acknowledging how fallen you were. But what makes you think you're free now? Thinking you're all that in a bag of chips, huh? So you got a few flyers out now. Big deal. The flyers is only a temporary title that someone put on a piece of paper. Who you really are is who you are from day to day. Temptation to temptation. Situation to situation. And sometimes you fail. I have found the most restoring Christians are the ones who know, have come to the conclusion with their arrogant self, you can fail, doll pumpkin. Yes. 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 I hear folks, I hear folks, I, listen, I preach, like I said, I preach with some of the most powerful leaders in America and abroad. And honey, when I sit and listen to folks, what I'm listening for is whether you are actually exalting Jesus and acknowledging and preaching the real gospel. Because the real gospel is... I will deny you the clock will not crow three times and I'll cuss somebody out on the way. That's Peter. The real gospel is the apostle Paul killing every Christian he could with his ignorant self. Now where was all that revelation then? Paul was ignorant and he was zealous and he was good at what he did. But he was just as far off course as he could be. He was just like you and me. Thought we knew something and didn't know a thing. But when Paul met Jesus on the Damascus Rose, God knocked him on his hide, blinded his eyes, and he said, who is the Lord? He said, I'm Jesus, the one you've been fighting. You thought you were fighting folk. You thought you were fighting Christian. Jesus said, Paul, let me open your eyes up, boy. I have to blind you so you can see. Oh, I'm preaching here after a while. Yeah, I think Prophet Artis is having Apostle Hopkins coming. And, you know, he, I don't know what that man ain't going to say. He's having Brother Ivory come. Brother Ivory. Ivory. Now, if you call Jesus, Jesus, if you meet me in Walmart and call me, hey, Ivory, how you doing, Sam? Yeah. Oh, so you didn't remember who I was. I am the apostle. Uh -huh. Boy, I wrote over, what, 17 or 18 books back there. 
I'm known. I'm chancellor of a university out of California, Arizona. I'm big time. I'm ivory. Deal his son. Twelfth child. Former drug addict. Former whoremonger. Repent of my sins. And still fight the same beast. No, I ain't running around lusting after you. Save yourself. Ain't thinking about you. Not impressed. So don't even, don't even, don't even go there. Don't, don't, don't. And it ain't because the thought wouldn't come. It's because I know I'm about to kill it. For it kills me. Somebody kill it for it kills you. You know, in 2003, God healed me through the process of cancer and I went through chemo. When I asked the doctor, just give me the simple, the down to earth deal about chemo and cancer. He said, well, it goes like this, sir. We try to kill the cancer with the chemo before the chemo kills you trying to cure the cancer. In short, it was, the, it was poison that had a power to affect that cancerous cell depending on the longevity of the treatment and your body's ability to take it. In my life, there is a cancer and a chemo operating. It's my carnal mind and my carnal thoughts. It's the old man that can't get saved. You know what the Bible said about the carnal man? It's the carnal mind. It said the carnal mind is enmity. That's a big name for being hostile at war. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to God. Neither indeed can it be. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. My carnal mind. That crazy stuff that I have to cast down. That I have to, oh, I'm not going to do it. I want to, but I'm not. I started to go down. And that, 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 that's a, so I said, that stuff. Said it'll never get saved. It'll never get born again. It'll never be blood washed. It has to be put to death. It has to be crucified by the resurrecting power of the cross. It has to be denied through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit. The second, the second you and I start glorifying our power to live right, then you're saying you no longer need his indwelling spirit to do it. And how could you begin in the spirit now think you're made perfect in the flesh? I done lost three people and their cousins. I understand. I'm good, son. If it looks like I'm hot because I'm on the, on the heat of the word right now. Because I'm preaching to myself. And I'm preaching to you. I came to Milford, Delaware. To my hometown folk. Not some big time place. Not millions of people. But to my hometown folk. To tell you, just say, baby girl. I'm trying to live right. And I've fallen and I've had to get up. I've had relapses that I had to get delivered. I've had things that I've had to fight. That I thought I had won over. But God was faithful. But God was great. He stood on my behalf. For the reason why God was able to restore me and heal me, bro, like David, I said, I have sinned against thee and thee alone, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Got to humble down to do that. Your fire won't help you there. Your notoriety nor your title will help you there. Is anybody understanding me? Yeah. Just can we, can, we, can we go a little bit more? Is it okay? You hold that. Oh, yeah. Look what it says in James 1, 12 and 13 and 14. James chapter 1, verse 12, 13 and 14. James. It says, Blessed is the man or woman that endures temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor. When this beast in me call me, takes me to the place of temptation, and I am tried, I'm being tempted to try to hinder me from my crown. My God, back in the day, woman of God, I thought it was just my lust in the one night stand. Back in the day, I thought it was, you know, a hit of crack, come on, and a bottle of gin, come on, somebody. I know you don't know what I'm talking about because y'all all sanctified, you ain't never done that. Not y'all. That was a time in my life, young man. You know what I was said to some of these people in here? And if I don't get high every day, you're tripping. I said the same thing. When the truth be told, God took and delivered me. And now, y'all, are you hearing me? That's right. God delivered me. This little stuff they're doing out here today ain't new. I'm part of the gang to help bring it in here. 
Is anybody understanding me? I have not forgot where I came from. And I'm not a fool. Then I know that if I don't stand by the grace of God and the mercy of God, I can be pulled back in. Somebody said temptation and trials. Now the big question is, what's yours? And I'm not asking you that because I want to know your business. I'm asking you that to remind you that you got business. Yeah. That's right. That's right, sir. All of us in here. No matter how we shout it while we're going, I love the praise and worship. I ain't throwing off on nobody in here. I wouldn't do that. I'm too mature for that kind of foolishness. And I got too much word to preach that I have to put fillers in like that. But every one of us in here, you battled your beast this week. You battled it on the way to church, didn't you? You battled it this week. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. One of the strongest healings I ever seen, baby girl, happen in our deliverance ministry was I was praying with people, and God said, I'm going to give you a message, and the title of the message is Secrets. Jesus. And the people were asking God to heal them from the deep inner womb of the secrets. You know what secret I'm talking about? Oh, no, no, I don't think I'm going to get a word of knowledge and call you out. Because you already got knowledge. You don't need to be called out. Are you understanding me? Secrets are the things that no matter how good you do, no matter how God use you, you're wondering if she will still love you if she knew your secrets. I'm talking about the stuff you can't even forgive your own self. Anybody wrestle with that beast? Yes. Now see, we're supposed to shout over it, preach over it, and tell you it doesn't exist. Uh -huh. But all of us got stuff. Yes, Are you hearing me? Somebody says secrets. secrets. Let no man or woman say when they're tempted. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. God didn't do this. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, this ain't God's fault. Ain't God's fault. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Look at your neighbor and say, God could not be tempted with evil, neither did God tempt any man. God didn't get me on crack. God didn't get me chasing and doing the mess that I had agreeable partners with. I didn't have that demon where I jump on somebody unwanted. I had guests. We talk, can we talk, bro? I never will forget that I'm not going too stupid. But I never will forget I, we call myself part of heart. Saturday night live. Both of us woke up Sunday morning. I got it. Cracked up, messed up, freaked up, everything else. You hear me? And I said the word freak, nothing else. You know why well, I got you know I got people that pick my words apart, so I wanted to make sure that when they make the notes, they say what I said. That's one of the things that come along with becoming well known. There are people who check me. So anyway, me and the late girl wakes up. She looks at me. Tears come in her eyes. Tears come in mine. And we sit on the edge of the bed. We look at each other. And said, we need to get saved. We need to go back to the Lord. She said, I know Jesus loved me. And it was Sunday morning. What was that? That wasn't a performance issue. That was the Holy Spirit. That was saying, I knew it was in you both. Jesus. And I was such a gentleman that I wouldn't control you nor manipulate you nor her. But my spirit was still there saying, Come up higher. Come to me. And some of you that are listening to me with that silent look you got right now, that was you too. Yes, sir. That no matter what you did and who you did it with and how in love you was or wasn't, how in lust you was or wasn't. Yes, you, you woke up after so-called fun and said, who shall deliver me from this body of sin? If it was all that, Bev, why didn't we stay? If it was all that, this is the crazy thing about the temptation that's in all of us. It never fills that hole. There's a hole inside of me that only God can fill. There's an empty place that only God can fill. I can sin. I can go back doing stuff. But only God. Only God can fill this empty place. Folk can think whatever 
they want about me, think who they think I am. It doesn't matter. This place here of salvation. God help me, deliver me from my strong enemy. And it's me, God. Every man is tempted when he is drawn away of what? His own. I can't hear you, soldiers. You're drawn with your own man. Now, here we go. We're going to get all shot. But I heard this and I heard that. Really? Really? What you heard is human beings that fail. What I want you to hear is when the human beings get up. When they get up. You ever had to get up? How about you? Amen. You? Have you ever had to get up? At right then when you had to get up, your title didn't matter, did it? All you needed to do was get up. God, the devil is trying to sift us like wheat so that he can destroy us and keep us from the crown. You better be very careful. There are people that you think have lost the crown when all they faced was the beast that they had to face. Let me tell you something. One day or another, sometime or another, Ivory Hopkins is going to have to face this beast called self. That guy's usually dead. Going to have to face this beast. Ed, I never shared this with Ed. Ed, Ed I, he rides with me many hours and we talk a lot. Uh, about, I was in a city about, about a couple of weeks ago and a young lady walked up to me in this convenience store. And she made a proposition to me. And she looked at me and she said, you married? I said, happily. She said, oh, you ain't that happy. I said, let me show you how happy I am. Walked out the door. Now you're clapping. She was fine. She was the kind that I would have. I know he did not preach that. He couldn't have possibly said that. Do you think just because you got saved that other folks ain't still attracted to you? Just because you got married, nobody else is attracted to you. But you got to choose you this day who you going to serve. You got to face the beast in your life. Every Don't y'all, y'all stand up on y'all up in here. Don't you play me. Come on. Y'all know hey, baby, all of Murray, all of them got that sneaky. Mm-hmm, no. Go on and say Amen. The enemy will send you the right muscles, the right biflexes. Come on, somebody. The enemy will send you whatever your eyes desire. A tree to make one wise. A tree to come on, somebody. But you got to choose what you're going to do with it. But the problem is, I, I don't know what's going on with people in here or those that are listening to me on this day. What are you in here? Nobody preach the truth. Every single one of you listening to me at YouTube, or Vimeo.com, yeah. all of them. I have a vehicle when I'm on radio. Oh, y'all look at me. Don't talk. Don't be inboxing me no dumb letters. Yes, that God. Now that you must be struggling with something. No, I got something to kill. Yeah. You're a fool if you think you ain't got something to kill. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what are you busy running your mouth about somebody else's battle yeah. and forgot about you? Look at your neighbor and say, don't you forget about your battle. Don't you forget about your battle. Don't you forget about your warfare. Yeah. Jesus. Right there. Right there. Preach it there. Preach it there. Luke 22, 31. Preach it there. Somebody said, my God, I thought he was going to spook demons. I thought there would be demons howling everywhere. I thought they'd be crawling under the floor. Oh, I'm just trying to tell you how to take ground away from them. Those devils are not make, putting stuff in you to make you act a certain way. They're feeding on what you got in it, and it's us. One of the generals of deliverance that trained me was named Charlie Holzhauser. Charlie Holzhauser has gone on with the Lord. He saw me when I was 21 years old, and the man said to me, you got a bad anointing, brother. He said, I guarantee you, I will, our ministry will support you for six months, and in six months, you'll be on the road so much, you won't need us to help you at all. It was Charlie Holzhauser that actually convinced me to go into ministry. For God was pushing me, but that man supported me. But here goes something Charlie said, and I'm going I'm to try it with y'all. How many of you know the enemy came to what? Steal? What? Kill? Kill. What? Say it again. The enemy came to? Steal. What? Kill. What? And destroy. 
and man will what? Kill. What? Kill. And man will what? So sometimes it's hard to tell the two, ain't it? We got in us, in our fallen nature, the same fallen characteristics that devils do. Steal, kill, destroy. And all they want you to do is become a twin that they can enter in. They want us to destroy ourselves with our temptations. And they know. How many of y'all have ever been taught the real reason why we have a resurrected body? Hey, you know, how many has ever been taught that what it meant when Paul said, who shall deliver me from this body of corruption? Jesus. Thank God. The resurrection of the physical body. Listen, my, the Holy Spirit is in my spirit, man, a woman of God. When I became born again, my spirit man became alive. Proverbs 20, 27 says, The spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord, searching the inward parts of the belly. Got that? In the book of Romans, it says that my spirit bears witness with his spirit that we are sons of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and where? In truth. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So my spirit, man, is sealed with the Holy Spirit about a promise until the day of redemption. All of these things I'm quoting are straight up Bible verses. This is what my spirit, man. My spirit, man, is perfected in God. My spirit, man, is where a prophetic revelation comes from. Not my brain. My spirit, man. That being said, because of the fallen nature of mankind, the body that we live in is subject to decay, Cravings and addiction. I can quote a verse for you and, and, and mess with you. Proverbs says it like this Proverbs 6 Whosoever committeth adultery destroys their own soul and opens up their self to a wound and a hurt. So, if I would commit adultery with a woman, I would cause an emotional bondage to take place in my emotions, in my soul, and I would open myself up to wounds and a hurt. Got that? Now, that's one part of it. Corinthians says, whosoever committed fornication sins against their own. I can't hear you. Wait a minute. Proverbs 6, it tells me how my soul is affected. In the book of Corinthians, it says how my body is affected. Now, what does that mean? My body can get connected, and I love my wife, Evelyn, but if I slept around with that, I'm going to do that that way nobody can say nothing prophetic in here. If I slept around with that and that was a female, my body would have got attached to the feeling. Because yeah. the feeling was the reason why I was out there all on me. Why my why part of me, Evelyn, I just don't understand it. Honey, I just love you with all of my heart. What it is, I'm being set up. And it came through the activation of my fallen nature. And the enemy positioned me so he could sift me like wheat. And he tapped into an area that he knew that I had a warfare in. So now I've got two things going on. An emotional wound, that wound and a hurt. My soul gets back. Man, I'm crazy acting. And then I say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave her alone. I ain't messing with her. I'm not going to meet that. And, then, and my body goes, yeah, but doesn't it feel better in sin than it does feel with being right? I'd have left three people, man. Oh, you understand me? I'm, I'm telling you, this is what's in all of us. This is what is in every single one of us. And so our emotions get tied and our bodies get tied up. And if you've been there, and some of you have, because I can tell by the way you're looking at me. Some of you got that revelation like somebody finally put it so I could understand what I was doing. <laughs> Listen to this man and woman of God. This is a, this is an actual well. actual situation. I remember uh, about a couple of years ago, a, a ministry was in hostage because of this very dynamic. And the Spirit of God led the wife to call me for prayer. And as we were praying, we were praying for the restoration of the soul and the soul ties to be broken. Jesus. For that emotional bond, because that's that connection. Sister and brethren, temptations are normal. But what it is, it's the enemy's way of sifting us. Mm -hmm. 
Was all y'all hearing me? Y'all are getting mighty quiet. I'm bringing no game tonight. I'm bringing no, no, no foolishness. I want to talk to you like a spiritual father. I want to talk to you. See, you, you, y'all, y'all hear about me on these conferences and, and this Facebook Live and all this kind of stuff. This is who I really am, man. I am a guy that's trying to make sure that I don't let myself, my worst enemy, mess me up. Because I'm going to tell you how this game works. Here goes what Peter, Jesus says to Peter, Luke 22, verse 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. That he may sift you as wheat. Look at your neighbor and say, Satan Amen. does not take us all at once. He sifts us. Now, I, I don't know, no, brother, some of you, some of you young folk hung with your grandma and them. Do y'all remember when they did that, 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 that thing, that, that, that thing, they, they take that sifter and crank that bad boy? Boy, I didn't know they could make some bread in the morning, girl. I don't know whether you have a spirit girlfriend, but I'm telling you that, too, my aunt and them could work out some bread in. They'd get that dough needed, man, and they'd crank that rascal. Good Lord Almighty, make me want that, uh, that king syrup and honey right now. And they with that king syrup and butter right now. But anyway, let me get back out of the flat. Okay. <laughs> look, 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 Apostle Wallace, she cranked that thing. They would crank the thing. And that's what I hear. Say they have desires. Sift is wheat. Because what they would do, the flour would have small lumps in it. And what it would do is when they would strike that wire and it would hit that mesh. It would fan it out. Lord says, Simon, Simon, Satan have desired to have you. Why did he want Simon? Because he knew his apostolic destiny. He knew the prophetic destiny. Our temptations and attacks of life are put there for one reason only. To take away your prophetic destiny drive your creativity the best that you got in you must be messed up must be diverted you must be sidetracked that's the way about to get anything like y'all yeah. looking at me like that boy y'all are looking at me like jesus i'm preaching real gospel now i'm not gonna tell you come up here give me a bottle of oil and a long line with hundreds of dollars and you're gonna get it until this comes by the word this comes by maturity this comes by understanding the technology of the self-life and the warfare we face simon satan have desire to have you that he may sift you as weak but i have prayed for thee listen what jesus said that he was the one that got this this is the one that got me, bro. Jesus says, I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Now listen, Apostle Wallace, you know the story. Peter cussed. Peter denied him. Yes, oh, yes, he did. Peter was among the gang that ran. And when one of the ladies, now ladies, we respect y'all. But listen at this. I come from old school. It's a mighty poor man that a woman asked the question and he got to buckle up and lie. I'm old school. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm not politically correct, so you get it, right? The lady comes up to Peter and she said, you're one of them. Your speech, somebody said, your speech betrays you. And Peter turned around and said, I don't know it. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah, you are. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And he cussed her. I don't know what he cussed. I'm glad the Bible didn't put it in there because we'd be preaching that, wouldn't we? You know we would. Somebody would use that as an excuse to get a good cuss. Because right? you're not delivered yet. Come on. Anyway. But whatever Peter said, now I'm going somewhere with this. Whatever Peter said to her, all of a sudden, the prophetic symbolism that God told him that would be a witness, all of a sudden, the cock crowed thrice. Come on out! And Peter heard God in that rooster and held his head down sadly. Jesus said to him, yet still, but I have prayed for you that your faith failed. What does that mean? What does that mean? Glad you asked. In the depth of us, with all of our craziness, with all of our mess, the truth that's in you going to rise and bring you back. The truth within you going to convict you, going to come at you, going to stir at you. You're going to have to fight a hard fight to just walk in that thing. And Peter, when he came before the Lord, when he saw him again, he said, and, and remember, he denied the Lord three times. 
And when he saw the Lord, the Lord, when he, the Lord is getting ready to ascend the second time, he says to him, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? Now he was about me, like me and you. He was like me when I messed up. It, it was like me when I failed. He said, don't you love me? And I'm going like, yes, Lord. I, I, I love you. But I'm hating me. I'm hating me now because I failed with the strongest beast in my life, myself, Ed. I'm angry at me. I can't forgive me. And he says, Peter, lovest thou me more than these? And he said to him very quietly, yeah, yeah Lord. He says, then feed my sheep. He said, lovest thou me more than these? And he turned around and looked at him. And he said, yes, Lord. He said, feed my lambs. And he asked him a third time. He was challenging each one of those fallen things that was a part of his nature. Because you see, even as Peter moved on later on in his apostolic life, that cowardice in him rose up and Paul challenged it. That's right. Mm -hmm. Jesus. That's right. See, Peter's stronghold, now somebody said was cussing, now I was whacking ears up. Uh -huh. Peter was a coward when he had to stand up for the gospel. Jesus. Jesus. And I know historically, according to apostolic eschatology, according to apostolic history, Peter gave his life for Christ. And he died and he went to the cross bold and bad. Fox's Book of Martyr talks about that. But at this particular place in his life, he was like you and me. He was now being challenged for his denial. And Peter and the Lord answers him the third time. Lovest thou me more than these? And he held his head down and he said, Lord, thou knowest all things. What God was trying to get Peter to understand. I prayed for you, boy. That your faith wouldn't fail. Look at your neighbor. Look, look, turn around look at somebody. Say, have you failed? Now, then my next question is, did your faith fail? Did your faith fail? Jesus. I done lost three people. Jesus. Have you failed? Did your faith fail? Jesus. No. Now, how do you fail and your faith not fail? Yes. Look, look, look at your neighbor there. I, I, I'm getting ready to hit. Look at the neighbor and say, how do you fail and your faith not fail? Because when you failed, your faith could line you back up again. I don't think this, I don't think this crowd got this. When you fail, and you will, your faith is going to line you back. Now see, when you heard that term faith, most people thought, think of the gift of faith. That's not what that is talking about. It is talking about the suck total of your understanding of the graciousness of the cross and all he paid for our salvation. Well, your faith is, I failed and I messed up and I got nowhere to go but back to Jesus because nothing else will save me. I failed and he said if I would come unto him, he would in no wise cast me out my sins and my iniquities. If I repent of them, he will forgive me. Therefore, Romans 8, 1, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because my faith failed. Now come on, somebody stand to your feet. My faith failed me not. It is my faith that's going to bring me back. It is my faith in him and all that he's done that's going to save me. Come on, give me some help over here. That's going to deliver me from my worst enemy, which is me. Thank you, Lord. Tonight, as we get ready to go before the Lord, you got a musician still here? Well, I, got, I got something for you. Come on, give me something sweet, man. This one here, I want slow rain on this one. I, I, I told him. Got, we got you. I, I want some slow rain. Oh, God, we thank you. Come on. You did the did the The Holy Ghost is up in here. Thank you, Lord. Tonight. Tonight, listen to me. Tonight, we're not, we're not worried about what your friend who you shot with and about you. Tonight, let's go before the Lord and ask him to heal us from the self-wounds where we have failed ourselves. Where we have come short. The stuff the folk don't know. You know, come on. Now, you might have behaved today. That's just one day. Preacher. That's just one day, preacher. That's just one day. That's just one day.
I guarantee you, if you catch what this revelation is saying to us today, beautiful. Pray along with me, Father. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I humble myself before your mighty hand. Lord God, I have struggles in my life with me. It's my attitude, God. I've been having this all my life. Mom and them told me about it. I had relationships that messed it up. And then relationships that caused me to walk in it. In the name of Jesus. I repent. First of all. Of any arrogance and pride. To feel like I'm above or better. I ask you in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Give me the strength. Over the beast that is in me. I'm not talking about a demon right now. I'm talking about my own actions. Sometimes I put them to death and sometimes I don't. When I get heavy. When I get depressed. When I feel beat down. I sink into these things. And I start getting into that I don't care attitude. In the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. Heal me, God. Break, Lord God, in Jesus' name. The secret strongholds that I can't tell nobody about. The secret wounds that I will speak to the one. In the name of Jesus, all through this room. Come on, come on. In the name of Jesus, come on. Come on. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on. That's it. Let us anointing do it. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Let God break the shame. Come on, Baba High. Look at the Holy Ghost. Don't worry about me doing nothing. God, did it Baba High. Come on. God, break the shame. Look, God, I know I wrestle with this habit. I know there are times I do good and then I found myself right back, right back, right back again. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Come on. In the name of Jesus. God break it. God break it. God break it. In the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. All of the pain. All of the grief. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, blah, blah. This ain't got nothing to do with your calling. This ain't got nothing to do with your anointing. This has to do with who we are as people. In the name of Jesus, help me God. Help me God. Somebody struggle with pornography. You go back and forth in it. God, break that yoke off of their life. In the name of Jesus, come on. Come on. Some folks are suffering with unforgiveness. You've had so many wounds by people and relationships that it's hard for you to let it go. In the name of Jesus, God, break that. Come on. 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 Every pain in baby girl, let her go down. Every wound in baby girl. Come on, come on. All that deep hurt in you, baby. I ask the anointing of God to heal you. Come on, baba. Come on, even a caged bird can still sing. Come on, come on, come on. The deep hurt, the deep wounds come out. Now in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on, all through the room. Come on. In the name of Jesus. All of it, all of it, all of it, all of it, all of it. All of it. I command the wounds from you growing up as a child. Those wounds that have hurt your life. Those wounds that have penetrated. Loose. All through the entire audience. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. You're a strong woman of God. But throughout your life, folks have walked over you. They walked over your kindness. And it still hurts deep. They walked over. Come on. All that pain in there. Come on. Come on. The worst rejection of all is to be accepted only for what people want. Only for what they want out of you. Only for what they can get out of you loose. Hey, come on, come on. Come on. I break the spirit of rejection and heaven is off of you. And I command it to go. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Come on, 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 come on. Every deep wound inside of you, baby girl. I command the to loose Chanel. 
Come on. Come on. Memories. Memories growing up. Pain growing up. statements I ask the Holy Ghost to strengthen you in your inward man because you're a good man you're a good man all the pain inside of you sir the pain that the man as we say you know how we say apostle man up I ask him to touch those wounds in you in the name of Jesus People get accolades of praise for everything but one thing. Sometimes being there, being reliable, can be depended on. Sometimes even from those we love, you wonder whether they see it. You wonder whether they can even hear it. I ask God to heal that in you. In the name of you, don't want nobody to bow down to you or or, 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 or give a parade for you. But sometimes in the depth of your private life, even of home, you just want them to know that I'm trying and I'm done and I'm here. Do you hear me? God heal that. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. My God. My God. My God. Y'all are such awesome people. Bless you, man. How you doing, my brother? Listen, I'm not that joker that runs around going to say stuff about people business and talk all crazy. But man, I want to just bless you. I want to just ask the Holy Spirit to keep you even praying for my struggles and my warfare. And I pray for yours, man. Because we need each other. God, in the name of Jesus, blocked doors and blocked walls that have been in his way I command them to be removed out of the way the Bible says that promotion comes from God I command in the name of Jesus every blocked door that have been hindered and getting in your way I command this power to be stripped by the power of the blood and I thank you God and I thank you God and I thank you God, thank you, God. oh I thank you Yes, God. That's it. That's it. That's it. Isn't that sweet? Isn't that a sweet anointing? Look how far we came. And we're still one day away. One flop away. You understand what I'm saying? 
God, we thank you. Worship him. Worship him. See you are Lord God Almighty. We worship you. What a magnificent and powerful night. You know what I mean? Thank you, Lord. It's okay, darling. Keep that song flowing. I'm going to whisper one word in your ear, darling. Sweetheart, I'm going to whisper one word in your ear and not around people. I command the abuse you suffered growing up as a child to loose you now. And I command the pain of it to go. In Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Sister Carly, could you come here, sweetheart? I command the molestation and every attack to go. And the shame that it caused your life. Let her go now. 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 It still troubles you sometimes. It still troubles your sleep. It still troubles your rest. Let her go. She was a small child. I command you to loose. Now. Now. Come on to God. Be the glory. God, we praise you. Sweet anointing, isn't it? Now, who in here is the important one? Him. Him. God, we thank you. You know what it says, Pastor Artis? It says, blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven and whose iniquities are pardoned. Hallelujah. Just like you, sweetheart. Can we talk? I asked the Lord, listen, there's a word I'm going to say to you. Your beauty has been your enemy. Because folks look at your outside and neglect, neglect your inside. Even with relationships that you have had, there's been pain and grief from them. And I command that hurt and the wall from them to lose you now. And then, come on, you're not just an outside package. I hear you saying, I'm me, I'm here. What about me? Come on. Now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost heal that. Come on. Come on. All the pain in there go. In the name. All the way. All the way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, Elder Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All that pain in there go. All the way. Come on. Jesus. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful? Little baby girl, how you doing, sweetie? How you doing? I pray the blessed dreams of God rest upon you mightily and that your sleep be filled with peace. Your sleep be filled with grace. Who's her? It's your, who's, it's your baby. Your baby has a seer's eyes. God has been speaking to her in dream and vision. So much she will understand prophetically. Because she has a seer's eyes. In the name of Jesus. Watch your mom. I pray for mother and daughter. That the wounds and the pains. Be healed in both of them now. Murray. In, come on. It's the Holy Ghost doing it to you, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. All the pain in that go. Leave both mother and child. I break spirits of abandonment. I break spirits of neglect. And I command. Come out. Shanda Come out of them now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Loose them from loneliness. Loose them from abandonment. Loose them now. In the name of the Lord God Almighty. Who is the King of heaven and earth. Who is our Redeemer. Isn't that awesome? God is doing that, not a man. Go! Now! Come out! Uh-uh. I bind that wall.
war burn now, and I come I bind you now, and I come into the loose now, now, take that.